Stars don't move like that. Okay, what the hell was that? Oh my god, there are UFOs. Hundreds of residents are reporting strange lights in the skies of North Carolina. Look at this shit. What the fuck? This is why they want us to stay in the house. This is why the fuck they want us to stay in the fucking house, nigga. It ain't the coronavirus, nigga. It ain't the radiation, nigga. It's this. What the fuck is this? What is this? What is that? What is this? Hold on. What is this? What is, what is this? What is that? What is this? What is this in the sky right now? What's going on? They're not, they not airplanes. They doing formations and shit. Like, what's going on? For real, for real. Somebody please explain to me, man. What's going on, man? Hey, this shit crazy right now. What the fuck? Behold, the eyes of the Lord God are upon the sinful kingdom, and I will destroy from off the face of the earth. Saving that, I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, saith the Lord. But thus hath the Lord spoken unto me, like as the lion and the young lion roaring on his prey, when a multitude of shepherds is called forth against him, he will not be afraid of their voice, nor base himself for the noise of them. So shall the Lord of hosts come down to fight for Mount Zion, and for the hill thereof. As birds flying, so will the Lord of hosts defend Jerusalem. Defending also, he will deliver it, and passing over, he will preserve it. Behold, the tongue of clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him. And all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him, even so. Amen. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. And I saw heaven opened, and behold a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself, and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and green. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treaded the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture, and on his thigh, a name written, King of Kings, and Lord of Lords. A space force, and the establishment of space command, the United States is now doing what it needs to do to protect our assets in space, and to ensure that space remains the heavens by which we not only protect America, but we sustain our economy, we sustain our commercial capabilities, we sustain Americans' way of life. So again, another very historic moment. I'm confident that both the Space Force and the Space Command will do what is necessary to defend us in space and to keep America great. Thank you very much, Mr. Sir. Great job you're doing, too. General Milley, please. Sir, thank you, Mr. President. And uh, as Secretary said, this is a historic day. Uh, some time ago, uh, we made a decision to establish uh, the Space Force, and that's because we are undergoing a changing character of war, which is of historic importance uh, for all nations. And as part of that, uh, the space uh, part of our uh, universe opened up as a domain of warfare. And it's critical that if we are going to uh, sustain our way of life, if we're going to defend our nation, uh, that we're going to have to uh, defend ourselves in space and, and therefore the need for space for us and it's a it's a great day for the nation it's a great day really for the world uh, that the united states of america establishes its first space force thank you very much please mr president thank you for your congratulations thank you number one yes sir i appreciate the honor you know, 16,000 space professionals assigned to the space force we're proud of this flight 
They come to work every day focusing on providing space capabilities for our nation, for our joint coalition forces, and for the world. We're proud of this flag. We're proud to have an opportunity to present it to you here for display in the White House. Well, thank you, thank you for your leadership. Appreciate it. Secretary, please. Thank you, Mr. President. You've really demonstrated leadership in establishing the Space Force. This is an important moment and an important month, actually. Uh, most of the Americans, before their first cup of coffee in the morning, have used space, but very few people realize how important space right. is to everything that we do, and that it's vulnerable. So we need to up our game in space, and you've recognized that and built a force that will help to protect our assets in space and deter aggressive action in space, and if deterrence doesn't work, uh, to be able to defend our assets in space and those of our allies. So we thank you very much for the leadership you've demonstrated, and we're excited for this breakthrough moment. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. We're building right now incredible military equipment uh, at a level that nobody's ever seen before. We have no choice. We have to do it with the adversaries we have out there. We have, uh, I call it the super duper missile. And I heard the other night, 17 times faster than what they have right now. Then you take the fastest missile we have right now. Uh, you've heard Russia has five times and China's working on five or six times. We have one 17 times and uh, it's just gotten the go ahead. 17 times faster, if you can believe that, uh, General, that's something, right? 17 times faster than what we have right now. Fastest in the world by a factor of almost three. So I just want to congratulate everybody and thank everybody. Uh, space is going to be, uh, it's going to be the future. Right. All glory and honor belongs to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai. All praises to the Most High of Yasharala. And this is Uriah with IS Nation. Double honors to the apostles, the elders, the great men who have passed this truth down from generation to generation, and we shall proclaim it. We must. Ayasharala, Space Force, quote-unquote. Esau has adversaries. Well, of course you do, you damn devil. The adversary shall bow the heavens, crack the skies, and immediately arrive with a decant amount of host armies to pierce your heads to slay that dragon in the sea because Esau you're that dragon your system this beast system that you have conquered the world under shall be pierced and put to damn death man Ayasharala I want y'all to closely listen to what these devils say. Just listen to the words of their mouth because their own mouth falls upon them every time, man. Listen to their words. Uh, some time ago, uh, we made a decision to establish uh, the Space Force, and that's because we are undergoing a changing character of war, which is of historic importance uh, for all nations. And as part of that, uh, the space uh, part of our uh, universe opened up as a domain of warfare. And it's critical that if we are going to uh, sustain our way of life, if we're going to defend our nation, uh, that we're going to have to uh, defend ourselves in space, and, and therefore the need for space for us. And it's a, it's a great day for the nation. It's a great day really for the world. We're building right now incredible military equipment uh, at a level that nobody's ever seen before. We have no choice. We have to do it with the adversaries we have out there. We're building right now incredible military equipment uh, at a level that nobody's ever seen before. We have no choice. We have to do it with the adversaries we have out there uh, at a level that nobody's ever seen before. We have no choice. We have to do it with the adversaries we have out there. We have no choice. We have to do it with the adversaries we have out there with the adversaries we have out there. We have, uh, I call it the super duper missile. And I heard the other night 17 times faster than what they have right now. Than you. Right. 17 times faster. Well, Esau, it doesn't matter how fast your puny ass missiles go. It doesn't matter how much agile your aircrafts have. Because they are no match 
for Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai and his host. He is a God of war. For he created your simple ass. But guess what? He also created the smith that blows and the nuclear destruction that shall deter you damn wicked pieces of shit from ever, from ever building again, man. Hey, man, I just got a few precepts and I'm out of here. Remain aware, Yasharala, of what's going on around. Because these devils know that Yahweh is returning. Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai is on his way. And he shall defend Jerusalem, man. He shall preserve Yasharala. The elect shall obtain salvation. And these devils know it, man. For it is written in stone. It is plastered over the heavens, man. So let's get a few precepts and I'm out. Not a long lesson, man. So this is 2 Samuel 22. And I'm going to start at verse 10. And it reads this. He bowed the heavens also and came down. So Yahweh Shai, Yahweh bowed Shem Yahweh Shai, bowed the heavens and came down. And what else? He bowed the heavens also and came down and darkness was under his feet. Verse 11, he rode upon a cherubim and did fly. Wait a minute. He rode upon a cherubim and did fly. What is this cherubim that Yahweh is riding upon and which he flies upon? Let's keep reading. And he was seen upon the wings of of the wind. Keep these similitudes in mind. He was seen upon the wings of the wind. The wings, keep that in mind, of the wind. So let's jump down to verse 17. And it reads, he sent from above, he bowed the heavens. This is why he sent from above. He, uh, Salaki, he sent from above. He took me and drew me out of many waters. So those many waters are the nations. But how did he take us? How did he send from above and take us and drew us out of many waters? Because that sounds like deliverance to me. Salvation. So wait. Let's read. Remember he bowed the heavens. Let's read a few more precepts. So let's go to... Uh, Let's go to Psalms 50, 57. This is Psalms 57. I'm going to start at the top and it reads this. Be merciful unto me, O Yahweh. Be merciful unto me, for my soul trusteth in thee. Yea, in the shadows of thy wings. Remember, we just read that Yahweh Shai rode upon a cherubim and did fly. And he was seen upon the wings of the wind. These are similitudes. Metaphoric speak, man. Let's read that again. Be merciful unto me, O Yahweh. Be merciful unto me. For my soul trusteth in thee. Yea, in the shadows of thy wings... He was seen upon the wings of the wind, those cherubims, the chariots, so-called UFOs. In the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed. So what calamities is this speaking of? So this sounds like salvation as well. So in the shadow of Thy wings will I make my refuge. To have refuge is to be saved. Redemption, salvation. Until these calamities overpass. Calamities are violent uh, clashes, destruction. Right? So let's see. Until, these, until this destruction 
overpass. We're going to make our uh, refuge in the shadow of his wings. He was seen upon the wings of the wind. He rode upon a cherubim and did fly. That is the wings of the wind. That cherubim, the chariots, the clouds, right? These are similar to. So let's go to Psalms 91. A few more and I'm out, man. Because these devils don't know what they're in for, man. Right? Because to the normal eye, people are like, what the hell is that? We're seeing all sorts of anomalies in the sky. But to the righteous, he have revealed the secrets of his salvation. This is Psalms 91. Salakia. Psalms 91. I'm going to start at verse 3. Get to the point and it reads, Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Those are the calamities we just read. Delivering is to be saved. So surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. A noisome pestilence is like nuclear fire. That's what this noisome pestilence is speaking of. So deliverance or salvation shall come from the wings of the wind. We shall make our refuge in thy wings or in the shadow of thy wings, man. So let's read on. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He, watch this. He shall cover thee with his feathers. What is feathers on? Wings, man. A bird. And birds have wings. These are similitudes. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler, man. So under his wings... We shall trust, man. There go those wings again. But watch this. Let's go to let's go to Isaiah 31 and 5. A few precepts, and I'm gone, man. Isaiah Salakia. Isaiah 31. Isaiah 31 and 5. And it reads this. As birds flying, so we just read, we shall make our refuge under the shadow of his wings. He shall cover thee with, or us with his feathers, man. And then we read in the beginning of the lesson that he was seen upon a cherubim and did fly. He rode upon a cherubim and flew. He was seen upon the wings of the wind. So now it's saying as birds flying, those wings, those feathers. These metaphoric speaks, man, or the metaphors as the scriptures speak, man. As birds flying, so will Yahweh by Shem Shai of host of armies defend Jerusalem. Defending also, he will deliver it. Didn't we just read? He will deliver us from the uh, snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence underneath uh the, under, under his feathers, in the shadow of his wings, as birds flying, man. So he will deliver it or us and passing over, will he will preserve it. So passing over, he will preserve it. To preserve something is to save it, man. So as birds flying, those wings, man, underneath his wings shall we make our refuge. Now, wait a minute. Let's go to Isaiah. We're going to get like two more and end this. Isaiah 26. Salakia. This is Isaiah 26 and 20. And it reads this. Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers. So now it's telling us to enter into those chambers or into his chambers, which would be the wings of that we will make our refuge in and, and underneath his feathers, man, as birds flying, he will preserve it, deliver Yasharala. Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself 
preserve it. He will preserve it, save it, hide yourself. Refuge is to be hidden, to be saved. We will make our refuge in the shadow of his wings, man. So hide thyself as it were for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. Wait a minute. Didn't we just read that in Psalms 57? We just read that until it overpassed, until those calamities overpassed. It's saying the same thing. Why? Because through thy precepts we understand. Don't let no man deceive you, Yasharala. Let's get a few more. Because we read earlier too how he bowed the heavens, right? He was seen upon, a, uh, he rode upon a cherubim and did fly, man. Let's get one more and I'm going to end this. It's not a long drawn out lesson, man. So let's go to, uh, this is Revelations. Salaki. This is Revelations 19 and 11. I'm going to get to the point. And it reads, and I saw heaven open. Wait a minute. We started the lesson with he bowed the heavens and came down. Same thing. He saw heaven open and what? I saw heaven open and behold a white horse. So first it said a cherubim. Now it's saying a white horse. And in certain instances, it says clouds. These are similitudes. A horse symbolizes power, strength. These chariots have power and strength and might. Clouds fly in the heavens. These are similar to us, man. Behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him, he rode upon a cherubim, was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself, and he was clothed with a vesture or vesture dipped in blood and his name was called the word of Yahweh. and the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses clothed in fine linen white and clean wait a minute the armies upon heaven followed him the armies are the angels so hold on now. Let's get one more. All right, Yasharala. Remember what we just read in Revelations about he was on, Yahweh Shai was on white horse, on a white horse. And the angels or the armies of heaven, which are the angels, followed him upon white horses. So what's on the back of a horse and what we used to ride in ancient times? Chariots, a horse and buggy, horse and chariot. These are similitudes. Watch this. So remember, the armies of heaven followed him upon white horses as well. So this is Psalms 68. And I'm going to read at 12 and skip down. And it reads, kings of armies did flee a spay. And she that tarried at home divided the spoils. So that she is Yasharala, the woman. Right, the kings flee a spay because Yahweh Shai is coming to smite the nations, right? The kingdoms, those crowns uh, upon the beast and the horns, those kingdoms. So kings did flee a spay; they fleed, right? So let's jump down to verse seventeen. This is the point. Matter of fact, let's keep reading. Verse thirteen. Though Salakia. Though ye be lying among the pots, yet shall ye be as the wings of a dove covered with silver and her feathers with yellow gold. Hold on now. We just went through the wings, making our refuge under the wings of heaven, right? As birds flying, that dove and his wings, uh, uh, silver and gold, that's those chariots, man. Similitudes, even more. But watch this about revelations and those white horses or horse and buggy, horse and chariot. And the armies of heaven followed him. Yahweh Shai. 
Let's jump down to verse 17. And it reads, The chariots of Yahweh are 20,000, even thousands of angels. And Yahweh Shai is among them as in Sinai in the holy place. Look at that. So the angels of Yahweh are 20,000, even thousands. And they're in the chariots. And it said, even Yahweh Shai. So those are the horses, that white horse, right? And those chariots, these similitudes, they are so-called UFOs, man. So I'm going to read one more and bounce, man. So let's stay in the same chapter and jump down to verse 32. And it reads, sing unto Yahweh, ye kingdoms of the earth. O sing praises unto Yahweh Shai Selah. To him that rideth upon the heavens of heavens, which were of old, lo, he doth send out his voice, and that Salakia, and that a mighty voice, man. So he rideth upon the heavens of heavens. We wrote, we read earlier in the chapter. He rode upon a cherubim and did fly, man. He was seen upon the wings of the wind. These precepts are beautiful, man. One more, just one more. All right, Yasharala, final precept. This is Psalms 104. I'm going to start at verse 3, and it reads this. Who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters. So hold on. Remember what we read earlier about in uh, Isaiah when he said make our refuge uh come you know come up hither and make our refuge in uh the chambers hide ourselves in the chambers right in which we read in Psalms so let's read this again who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters so these waters are talking about the heavens man the heavens Remember in Genesis, he divided the waters from the waters, the waters down here on the earth and the waters in the heavens. So those beams are what comes out of those chariots, those that concentrated fire. So he lived the beams of his chambers in the waters. That's what this is speaking of. Let's read it again. Who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters, who maketh the clouds his chariot. Watch this, who walketh upon the wings of the wind. We just went through all that. There's no need to further elaborate because we already went through the wings of the wind. So even with the wings of the wind, it said, who maketh the clouds his chariot. We just wrote, read about the chariots and the angels, the horse and buggy, the white horse and the chariots, these similitudes. This book is not for everybody to understand. So listen, there you have it. So I'm going to read one more, two more. I know I keep saying final precept, but just for a full understanding, man. So I'm going to read two more. And the reason I'm going to read the last one is because of this video in its entirety. So this is Revelations 11. In verse Salaki, in verse 12, and it reads, And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. So we just read those clouds, those chariots who walketh upon the wings of the wind. So we ascended up because. We were beamed up in the chariots, the so-called UFOs. Do you see how this is coming all to fruition, man? Through thy precepts, we understand. Not people talking and saying what they will, especially these damn Edomites, man. Because they will quickly draw you out your circle, Yasharala. Keep the faith, man. So I'm, I'm going to get one more and I'm going to end this. The reason why I'm going to get this one is because of the video at large. Final precept, I promise. This is 2 Ezra 13. Start at the beginning. And it reads, 
After seven days, I dreamt a dream in the night and behold, a wind arose from the sea and stirred up all the waves or all its waves. So this sea is the waters in the heavens. Remember, we just read who layeth his beams uh, in the waters. These waters are the heavens, the sea up above, man. And it reads, stirred from the Salakia, a wind stirred from the sea and stirred up all the all its waves. And I looked and behold, his wind or this wind made something like a figure of a man come up out of the heart of the sea. Like I said, this sea is the skies, man. We read that he bowed the heavens and came down earlier. So how can he bow the heavens and come down? But this is saying he came out of the sea because the sea is in the heavens, the waters that's in the heavens. And it reads, so it made a figure like a man, right? And I looked and behold, that man flew with the clouds of heaven. Remember what we read earlier. He was seen upon a cherubim and did fly. He flew upon the wings of the wind. Now it's called it in a cloud. Before it called it a uh, uh, white horse, right? These are similitudes. So now it's saying he was seen upon a cloud. Those clouds are the chariots. We just read it, man. These beautiful precepts, man. That man flew with the clouds of heaven. Those clouds are the armies in which we read in Revelations. The angels are 20,000, even thousands of angels that are in these chariots or clouds with the clouds of heaven. And wherever he turned to look or turned his face to look, everything under his gaze trembled. And wherever or whenever his voice issued from his mouth, all who heard his voice melted as uh, as wax melts when it fills the fire. So this is those beams who lay of his beams in the waters, the, the beams from the chariots, man, that concentrated fire to melt everything under it. After this, I looked and behold, an innumerable multitude of men were gathered together from the four winds. So that's these nations and this space force in which they portray, man. But watch what happens. For we see prophecy emerging in front of us, man. This is all written and it's wilt, man. So what did it say? The men came together or were gathered together from the four winds of heaven to make war against the man who came up out of the sea. And I looked and behold, he carved himself or for himself a great mountain and uh, Salaki, a great mountain and flew up upon it. We already read that he rode upon a cherubim and did fly. This great mountain is this chariot. It's going to be a, a huge chariot, man. It's like a mountain, man, flying. And it reads, and I tried to see the region or place from which the mountain was carved, but I could not. After this, I looked and behold, all who had gathered together against him to wage war with him were much afraid, yet dared to fight in Salakia. And behold, when he saw the onrush of the approaching multitude, he neither lift his hand nor held a spear nor any weapon of war, but I saw only how he sent forth from his mouth as it were a storm of fire and from his lips a flaming breath and from his tongue he shot forth a storm of sparks. All these were mangled together, a storm of fire and a flaming breath in the great storm and fell on the onrushing multitude which were, or Salakia, which was prepared to fight and burnt them all up. So destruction is near for you devils. Bring on your space force, man, and your missiles that's faster, 17 times faster 
than any missile on the planet. For that doesn't matter. Because the chariots and the angels will subdue, man. All glory and honor belongs to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. All praises to the Most High of Yasharala. And you can also read Habakkuk 3, and it talks about the same thing, right? It says his troops are going to invade, man. That's that so-called alien invasion. Remain spiritual, Yasharala. Remain spiritual at all costs. I love you guys, man. Peace, I'm out. Building right now, incredible military equipment uh, at a level that nobody's ever seen before. We have no choice. We have to do it with the adversaries we have out there.